It's Tuesday morning and of course time for health and this morning we're discussing signs of dyslexia in adults. Dr. Adrian Ticolo is our guest this morning, a certified medical practitioner with years of experience in the medical field. It is great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Now just for those that maybe didn't tune in last week and don't understand, what exactly is dyslexia? All right, so thank you. Dyslexia is a specific learning difficulty or a mm. learning difference that impacts your ability to learn to read, write, and spell, mm. uh, as well as comprehension, organization, or attention. Mm. But it also has a lot of strengths as well. So oh, okay. It's also very creative and intuitive. Is this something people can grow out of? No, you can't grow out of being dyslexic. It's inherited. So like the color of your eyes or the texture mm. of your hair, you can't mm. grow out of it. Mm. But you can overcome a lot of the difficulties that, that might come, come with it. With it. Yeah. All right. And so now we're talking about it in adults. So that means that these people have come to under. Does, is it possible that you can be dyslexic as an adult and you don't know? Oh, absolutely. Thousands and thousands of people are dyslexic and they don't even know that they're mm. dyslexic. Um, in adults, I usually say that they're different species, you know, because they found different strategies around some of the difficulties. But usually they will find that they struggled in school as a child. They remember struggling in school. They would usually still have difficulty with reading a different type of font style, for instance. Mm. And they have to read text or sentences over and over to comprehend what they're reading. Mm. Oftentimes you find that um, they also have difficulty putting their ideas down on paper, even though they have good ideas. Mm. And so they might employ like their spouse or their friend or their, you know, colleague to help them with writing. With writing. Yes. They also have difficulty with spelling. And um, they usually have strategies around how to remember how to spell a word. So for instance, like business, they might think of it as bossiness. Mm. so that then it helps them remember how to spell it. How to spell it. Exactly. Um, now, okay, now, so the, I would, for, for me, as a kid, when they have this kind of symptoms and it's not diagnosed correctly, I would blame maybe the guardians or the adults or the wards around them. But then growing older and then uh, coming into terms with this and not understanding what exactly is wrong with you, how does an adult move forward? Maybe after finding out, okay, I am actually dyslexic. After a while, after not knowing that this is why I had these challenges, you know, then growing up, I mean, a kid, you you would want to compare kids, oh, why are you not smart in school and all of that? Not knowing that this was a hereditary condition or mm -hmm. something that had caused this. Mm -hmm. But then as an adult, you've come to terms with it. How do you move forward? All right, so I have to say dyslexics are intelligent people. Mm. Very intelligent. In fact, they have average to high intelligence. So Dyslexia does not affect your intelligence. Okay. And so they literally can do anything they want to do. I, I think the most important thing is to really find out that you are dyslexic, that is, if you have an assessment done. And then you play to your strength. There's a lot of technology that can help you with your difficulties. So if you have difficulty reading, you can use text-to-speech software, speak-to-text and all of that. But play to your strength. They're usually very creative, problem solvers, thinkers outside the box. You know, they have good spatial awareness. And so you can use all of these things. Build on your strength as an adult. So help yourself you know, with your difficulties. Find what helps. If you're not good at reading, find someone to teach you how to read better. You use a software or use a reading pen or a scanning pen. Mm. You know. But the most important thing is recognize that you're smart, you're intelligent, and you are here to contribute to society. Mm. So where is your strength? Where does it lie? And play to your strength. Apart from, you know, the difficulty with reading and comprehension sometimes, mm -hmm. are there other ways that, uh, you know, or other forms that this uh, dyslexia actually shows up in adults? Are there other forms? Oh, absolutely. In memory, for instance, they usually forget things, mm. you know, so they can forget directions, they can forget instructions, mm. they can forget things in a sequence, so they have difficulty with memory. They can also have difficulty with organization. And so um, around them, you know, their things might be disorganized, their mm. home, their space. Um, they might get easily distracted. So noise and, you know, other things distract them easily. It's also possible that, you know, to begin a task might be difficult, especially one that has to do with writing. How do I start? Where do I start? You know, and then time management as well. Sometimes they're not very good at managing their time. Mm. So I, other I, you things... You know, people are trying to think, how much of these symptoms do I exhibit? Uh, maybe try to place themselves there, but do you have to? Do you have to have all of this to maybe to diagnose yourself, or you do you need to go to a professional to make sure that you get a yes. correct diagnosis? Thank you. I, I would say, look, if you find that you have 
a cluster of the signs. You, you, can't, you can't say you have dyslexia or you're showing the signs from just one sign. Mm. But you have a cluster of it. If you struggle with reading and writing when you were younger, if you still struggle now, if you're slow at reading, if it takes your time to comprehend, if you have to read over and over again. You know, so if you have a cluster of the signs together, then do get an assessment. Mm. I think it's, that's important. Mm. You know, don't self-diagnose. Don't self-diagnose. Yes, mm. because there are several areas to dyslexia. We want to find your strengths and your weaknesses so that you can play to your strength. We have someone, I, of course, one of the most famous dyslexics is uh, uh, Richard Branson, who was able to overcome it and do all of that. So mm -hmm. we're trying to say that, look, in spite or despite this other thing, people like Ken Reeves, Tom Cruise, you can still be on top or you can still get to the pinnacle of whatever career you choose. Absolutely. To. One in five persons is dyslexic. So all of them there, we have one exactly. One in five. Yes. 20% of 20 humanity yes. is dyslexic yes. at different levels, right? Yes. They're all not at the same level. Yes. So, so you, you have, have mild to severe, ah. but you could have mild dyslexia. Yeah, you dyslexic. you might have just 1% dyslexia. <laughs> That's something. It's just a joke. But yeah, you have it in very, very Yeah, so it varies in that. degrees. Yes, it's oh, okay. on a spectrum. 20%. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And, and you, you know, because they're so smart and they, they come with all of the skills that are required, they're also very good people, very intuitive very sensitive, so very emotional. They're usually very honest as well because, you know, they're more, they're more in tune to the right side of their brains. I have a colleague so that's very honest like that, and the way she does things, so <laughs> she easy. can be very, sometimes she can be, can't do it, like you said. Why, why, do they have to, why, do they, why do they have to be honest? Well, the thing is that the, the brain controls literally everything okay. about us. Okay. And um, so you have the right side and the left side of the brain. But mm. the right side of the brain is usually more in tune with your emotions, your sensitivity, you know, mm. um, your, your intuition. And that's the part that really helps us stay attuned to our humanity. So, yes, they have a tendency to be more honest, mm. you know, to be sincere, to be open, to be warm, mm. and all of that. In fact, they have the skills that is required in the workplace, hmm. if, I, if I may say so. Oh, wow. And if you see even now, LinkedIn has approved dyslexic thinking as a, an employable skill, because they do come with all of those strengths. Yes, absolutely. Now that's quite something. Thank you so much, Doctor, for this expose. At least a lot of people understand that they don't have to be ostracized, as it were. Absolutely. But then they can uh, still have dyslexia and be the best at whatever they choose. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so pleasure. much.